Hello everybody, uh, welcome back to RenderBots, my name is James and this is a very quick tutorial to cover um, rendering or how I should say how I render. Um, I've been asked so many times about this I thought it would be great to put a really small video together to show you how I render my projects out and how I share them as well. Um, so let's um, quickly look at something which I rendered out recently. So this is um, a tutorial. Uh, that's out at the moment, um, showing you how to create this. And this was um, rendered out at 720p. It looks really, really good. Um, if I press Command and I on this video, it brings up um, kind of dimensions of the video. And as you can see, it's 120 by 720. Okay, so that's just 720p. Um, so it's HD, but not obviously full 1080p, but obviously cinema can do that. And uh, this is kind of what I normally go for whenever I do anything sort of online. It, it hasn't got to be crystal clear. Um, looks great on a 42 inch TV. Um, and I actually like this resolution because um, it's quick as well. Okay, so unless you're doing something for broadcast where it specifies it must be 1080i, 1080p, um, obviously do that. Uh, but I quite like 720p. It gives me a great picture and looks great on a 42 inch TV. Um, it's all about the project really and how um, how much detail you need in it but I find for what I do personally this is great unless I had a client ask me something to fit specifically um, so with that done uh, let's jump into cinema okay and as you can see this is a little project as I said I was working on um, you can get this on YouTube now called Renderbots uh, Nuts and uh, as you can see we're sort of showing people how to create dynamics and this is going to hit in here and roll around here Okay, so there's my little project anyway, there. Let's pause that. So I'm gonna render this out. I'm actually gonna um, push this out. So to do that, I'm gonna go to um, my render settings, um, which is here. Give that a click. And um, the first thing you see is with um, render standard. Okay, and this is, the, well, again, this is what I use for YouTube and um, just showing people stuff. And to be honest with you, this um, video here it's just got a few lights in there and a few shadows. It's not photorealistic. So it's a very, what I call an animation type scene. So I'm using the standard renderer here. So if I give that a click, you'll see we've got all sorts of ways to render this out. Um, again, I'm I'm not an expert in this, but um, I've used a few of these. This is the new physical renderer, which you get with Cinema 4D R15. And uh, it's pretty good, you know, you're going to get some really good, great shadows, real realistic details. And of course, it's going to be a lot, um, f um, <clears throat> it's going to be a lot, um, takes a lot longer to render stuff out. Um, again, here you've got software, hardware, cinnamon, <coughs> cinnamon, and then V-Ray as well. So um, V-Ray um, is something that I'm actually learning myself right now. I'm looking to push some tutorials out on this. Uh, but it's a plugin and it enables you to render stuff out uh, proper photorealistic. Um, but again, as I said, I'm not an expert in this. This is just the ones I use. So in this case, I'm just using a standard renderer. Otherwise, I may use physical or I might use V-Ray. But again, for all the demos I've done so far, it's been standard. So everything you see on YouTube right now, this is kind of what I've gone for. Nothing realistic lighting. Okay, so with that done, uh, I'm going to look at the word um, output. And the output here is obviously 800 by 600. This is no good uh, for what I want to do. So I'm going to click on this little icon here. And I come down to the word film. So with film highlighted here, um, as you see, it sort of opens this up. And I can come down here. Now, again, depending on your region, where you'll be showing this for. And again, a lot of times, guys, um, the person who's asked you to produce this movie, this film, will give you the output settings. They will say, oh, you know, it's for this, this, this. In this case, you know, as I said before, I, I kind of use this one here, HDTV, 720, and 25 is uh, 25 frames per second. Okay, so I give it a click. You sort of, in the background there, it just jumps slightly, because uh, obviously the picture is going to be slightly wider. Okay, so with that done, it's obviously pixels. I'm happy with that. Come all the way down here. And you see at the moment it says frame range set to current frame. Um, yeah, well, what's this here? So it says that current frame from uh, 116 to 116. So actually, I don't want current frame. I need it to be all frames, right? I'm going to be rendering the whole full full uh, full range of um, 
in this case, uh, keyframes, which is 800 in this project. It's quite a large, <laughs> quite a big project, uh, but it's zero to 800 frames. Okay, so again, I'm happy with that. So just to go over it again, um, I'm using HD 720 25 frames per second. If not, click on there, film video, and then pick whatever you want inside of here. Again, I'm just gonna go for this one here. Once I've done that, frame range, all frames, make it all frames, make sure it starts from zero frames to end. So that's the range it's going in. And that's it with that screen there. So let's go to the word save. Obviously I wanna save this file. It's gonna say, where do you want to save it to? I can say file. And in here, I would follow this along, click inside here and say, you know what? Save it to the desktop, call it uh, render test 1.0 magic and again it's going to save for me into the desktop area hit the word save and then you see the word format here tiff psd layers now again i know some people who will use this and sort of it will do all the frames and they'll tie it up together later on i always at this point click on here and as you see all these settings it is quite mind-boggling and no wonder people ask me you know <laughs> how to uh, render from this uh, so I always go down to the word uh, quick time movie. Okay, this is this is perfect for me. Uh, but it's not doesn't finish there because I've got to go to the word options now. Click on options, and as you see, it's set to animation. Um, I want this to be pushed out, and again, loads of settings here. Um, <clears throat> I can only talk about what I know. Obviously, um, Apple ProRes 444 is the highest resolution I believe you can do on this. Um, Again, uh, whoever wants you to create this end movie for them would probably specify this. But for me personally, Apple ProRes 4444 is the highest and it's gonna create a massive file. I mean, just gigabytes of information. So I don't need that. A lot of my stuff's for YouTube and uh, just for personal stuff. So I'm gonna go all the way down here and choose H.264. And again, it's perfect for what I need. I don't need to change anything else in here. That's all I need to do. Press OK. So that's it. It's going to save it there. Um, we've made it quick time. Happy with everything else. Um, again, I'm not using any of these other options inside of here. A little check box is here to let me know to do that. Um, excuse me. If I was going to be using V-Ray, excuse me, if I was going to be using V-Ray, I would get a lot more options. Um, and again, I won't go into that because it's a plugin. It costs a lot of money. And I will talk about that when I do a V-Ray um, tutorial. So in this case, standard, happy with that. It's gonna go there, do all that. So output, we changed, we changed, save, we've changed, we changed, gone to quick time using options. So with all that done, just press the red icon. It's now ready to be rendered. Um, now all I'm gonna do is press this little button here. And what this does is, if so the minute I click on it, it says, okay, I'm gonna start to render. So this is our render window. And as you can see on the right hand side here, it's racking up all the frames really, really quickly. Let's uh, expand this window open slightly here. And we can see the same, each frame, zero frame, took less than the point, uh, point second to actually do. And it's surging through all these because um, I've got a quite compu uh, quick computer here. I'm using a MacBook Pro uh, 15. It's uh, a 2013 late model. In the UK, it costs you around £2,200 uh, for this one. It's got 16 gigabytes of RAM. It's an i7. Um, so plenty of plenty of um, oomph, if you like, to uh, push this render out. As you see, um, I've only got a few lights in the scene. Very basic textures. Again, keeping the textures really simple will speed up your render. And as you see, it's firing through that, and I'm able to see it almost in real time. It's uh, it's going really, really well, actually. Um, so down here, we see the little green line flowing across. Let me know where it is in the render. Uh, normally, you know, um, <clears throat> depending on the project, of course, I, I do this when I go to bed. So I'll set this up and I'll go to bed, wake up in the morning, and the quick time file will be complete. Um, but what I love about it is it's it's showing me uh, where it is. As you see, it's just surging on there. I can see it in real time what it's going to look like. And these are Chrome. So again, uh, the render is going to take a long time because obviously it's going to reflect the Chrome on that on that little nut there. Um, its environment, I guess, it's uh, very deep um, red with the orange in the background. Um, th there's so much that... Um, when it comes to render settings, there is so many. Um, again, I'm just showing you what I think works for me. 
in this instance um, with YouTube and, and what I do with YouTube, uh, it works perfectly fine. Okay, that's doing that. So what I can do, which is quite cool, is just go to the word file and stop rendering. Now, when I first used Cinema 4D, I used to worry that if I press stop rendering, it would actually, you know, um, not save what I've done. It actually does. So if I press stop rendering here, okay, are you sure? Yes. Okay, so if I press minimize there, and if I uh, go to my desktop here, we will see here that, um, I think it's that one, right? That one it is there. So it's I've stopped it, it's created a .mov, render test one, if I press the space bar now, boom, there you go. Not too bad, right? So um, that's it guys, that's how I render for YouTube and for a majority of the projects I do. Again, I'll be covering a V-Way one very soon. Um, I hope that helps. Um, until next time, um, follow me on Twitter at, at uh, render underscore bots. Um, yeah, far away, ask me questions on, uh, on my email. All the details are down there. Take a look and subscribe and like. Um, hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks very much. Until next time, happy rendering. Take care. Thank you.